because it's a uh, smooth surface, it has no visible grains, it's just a, a combination of really uh, small crackles. Uh, but you also can see the big crackles, something uh, that really uh, accented uh, defect, something like uh, uh, when you accented uh, damage, and in result you can see the natural color. So these crackles, it's like brown, it's the natural color of the inner layer of the layer, it's uh, fibers. It's something that you can see when you uh, tear the leather apart inside, uh, you can see especially this uh, light brown color. So how we can show it onto the model, if it's something really old, where you crack it, so you just can paint especially the uh, light brown crackles. Can I have a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, on the beginning you mentioned that for the cloak of the Roman soldier mm -hmm. you used the oil painting for, ah, for the... Yes, uh, yes. For the dots, mm -hmm. uh, which colors or which kind of colors are you using for, for, for example, for the yellow or uh, for these dots or for the lighter? Is it uh, up, up so? This is only acrylics. Only acrylics. Only acrylics. Uh, and I think the oils it's very good, especially when you paint something really random, uh, because it uh, it's, it was made it like a print of the tip of the flat brush. You cannot control every separate spot like here. All the spots was painted separately. Mm -hmm. manually and I control every the spots and the result I can um, vary the contrast, I can vary the position especially for uh, reach the uh, controlled randomness but when I use the oils and when I use especially the print uh, any kind of texture looks uh, really random uh, sometimes it doesn't look good because for example I cannot press it deep inside of the folds but texture also exists deep inside it's looking good on the crest of the folds, but inside it's not good enough. And then sometimes I need to uh, make something like additional uh, stipples. So anyway, uh, random uh, will be perfect on the extended parts. But inside of the folds it's not so good and I must go uh, deep inside of the, the structure, maybe repair some dots, so it's, it's not very good. Uh, but anyway, uh, this uh, oral texture it's, uh, it's about the natural randomness. Acrylic it's about the controlling randomness. Okay, I think uh, the final picture, when you can see all these materials together, the leather, the canvas, and the uh, wool. Uh, so it's um, uh, part of the bust of the World War I uh, uh, French infantry. So you can see the rough, can uh, rough canvas here, you can see the uh, rough uh, wool here, like combination of the spots. Uh, you can see something like uh, old uh, leather here. Uh, so, how you can figure out that it's old leather? As I say, it's a combination of different colors. It's more thick on the edges, it's more dirty on the edges, and you can see something like a, uh, visible lines in this direction perpendicular to the painting. It's like uh, small uh, crackles. In result, uh, different materials in the same way, so you can check all this was painted with acrylics. Uh, but uh, I uh, control any kind of uh, spots here. Here I try to reach, uh, especially the uh, randomness. And here I just need to make some something like a, a randomness in some limit, in some direction. Anyway, all was uh, painted uh, by myself, and every every uh, material have some structure that I uh, find on the reference and apply to the model. So uh, I think that's all. Uh, any questions? Okay. So I have uh, just one question. Is this possible for us mortals or is no. it <laughs> just, just the painting guards do this? <laughs> uh, so actually when you uh, paint, especially the dots, sometimes it's just enough. Uh, because a structure it's not so uh, good visible. Sometimes you can see a uh, combination of materials from the different uh, different distances and sometimes you, you cannot figure out what you see. But you can see only that uh, one material looks uh, rough. And how you can reach the roughness of material? You can paint it like a dots. For example, one material, it's really uh, fine, high quality. You just paint it like uh, one color everywhere. Another material looks rough. It it's also has a color, but it also has another quality of surface. And will be enough if you just paint, uh, maybe in the same, uh, the same color, so one will be uh, red, another will be yellow will be also red, but you can compare. Uh, here you can see only gradient, only shades and highlights, and here you can see the dots. In result, uh, from the difference, uh, these materials will look different between, between its uh, 
uh, between these uh, two materials because on one you can see a uh, flat surface, on the other you see the noise, especially the noise. Uh, as I say, it may be something like a, a red t-shirt and red fleece jacket. Color may be absolutely the same, but especially the sense about material will be different because you can show the noise. And it's about any kind of material. If you paint something like a natural, leather, uh, wool, uh, linen, it's not the same color everywhere. It has a noise. So, uh, for instance, this picture, is it oil paints or acrylics or both? It's only acrylics. Only, only acrylics, acrylics okay. yeah. Because acrylics can uh, give you possibility of, um, it's about the control. Uh, because oil, as I say, if you try to paint with oils, did you try it? No. Uh, because it's dry a long time and you just need to wait uh, several days until one layer will be dry and then you can go to the another layer and um, you can mix it uh, in the same time very well, you can receive the really smooth gradient but you cannot receive the fine precise lines uh, because all layers still wet and it will be just blended together. With acrylics it's not so, it's dry very quickly and uh, you can paint one layer and after paint small small lines, small details. Uh, maybe uh, for the smooth gradient it's not good because uh, you need to spend a lot of time, especially for receive really smooth gradient. It's several uh, hours of small details, it's very long and maybe sometimes it's dull. Uh, but especially for the texture, sometimes acrylics much better. Especially when you paint, um, for example, uh, old faces. Uh, I like to paint the uh, old faces with acrylics because I can show uh, the small uh, mimic wrinkles, uh, something like a, a stubble, for example, something like a shavy hairs. But for the young uh, face, I prefer the oil because I can reach the, uh, the deep colors, uh, the smooth gradient, and really uh, soft texture. And I don't need to paint a lot of small elements like the wrinkles. It's about the main volume, maybe just a little of correction on the eyes, for example, on the lips. But anyway, it's about the uh, big volume. Uh, but the old faces, it's about the smallest details because uh, older faces have uh, a lot of wrinkles. So, and I like acrylics because I can control every detail. And every detail may be uh, put it to the right place and in the right shapes with the right color and I don't need to wait it uh, I don't need to wait several days until it will uh, dry and I can go forward. So this is how it's working. Do you have uh, any pieces in competition here? Ah uh, no. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm in jury and no. No this year. <laughs> <laughs> Not on this play. So any questions? What size of brush do you use for the, for the brushes? What size? Uh, what size? Um, so, it uh, depends on the details. Uh, Sometimes I need um, uh, zero or number one uh, because it, um, it's not so thin. Uh, because I need a uh, volume of the paint that I can hold uh, on the brush. Because uh, smaller brushes, maybe it's good for the oil uh, because a uh, small volume of the uh, paint will uh, dry. Uh, not so quick, but with acrylics it's just not enough. Uh, you just need some volume that uh, collects the water, uh, collects the liquid, and in result it's not the smallest brushes. So do you use a lighter brush? Uh, no, I think it's so have the uh, different uh, length of the fur, uh, the short, medium, and the long. The long is the lighter. It's especially for make the line for some uh, with, with some special shapes, but I think it's not really good for smallest details on the models because it's uh, not easy to control, especially the line. Sometimes I prefer uh, more uh, universal. The, uh, not not sometimes, always I prefer the medium length of the fur. Uh, the short fur it's especially for making the uh, dots, the points, but the medium it's. Uh, it, it's good for everything, and for the line and for the dots, just need some practice, especially about the uh, control of the tip of the brush. Uh, because most important part is the tip of the brush. And, uh, you cannot paint the small details if your tip of the brush is rounded. You need something like a sharp tip, and you cannot paint the, uh, a lot of uh, how it's called a lot of texture with the oil. For example, if your tip of the brush too sharp, you need something like a flat surface. So, uh, depending on your technique, uh, for acrylics, I prefer. Um, uh, zero, uh, one, uh, 1.5 um, uh, size of the brushes. 
Uh, it depends on the manufacturer because uh, different uh, kind of manufacturer have a different market. Uh, I don't know how market in the Windsor Newton, Da Vinci. I prefer the Russian brushes uh, because it's very cheap and it's domestic product and it has no um, additional taxes and it's very cheap. Uh, in result, one brush is something around two or three euro. I mean, the small scale and compared with the Windsor Newton, it's very cheap. Uh, maybe the quality of the um, metal. Um, it's called the holder, uh, which holds the fur. Maybe it's not so good, and you just need to draw out something like really bad quality brushes. But anyway, the remainder is very good. Um, it, it's cheap, and the quality, it's natural. Um, and as I say, you don't need really big brushes, because uh, you just don't need something like uh, painting of the big surfaces, because model always uh, small. So as I say, it's uh, uh, the size, the thickness of the brush. It's something around uh, one millimeter, uh, maybe uh, one with a half, not bigger. Uh, because with the bigger you can con you cannot control the smallest details. But the medium size is good because you can paint in the surface and the small details. Too thin it also not good because you, you, you cannot paint a lot. Because it's just not enough of color to the brush. So the medium size but not big. And what brands of acrylics do you use? Um, what do you prefer? Product, product, product? Any find that I, any any kind of acrylic that I can find, it's good. Just uh, one request. It might it must be totally matte, uh, because when I paint the texture like uh, clothing, like uh, canvas, uh, it's totally matte. It, it cannot receive some glossiness. Uh, and my main request, it must be uh, totally matte. Uh, I like uh, scale 75, uh, but it's not good because it divides to the uh, medium and the pigment too quick and it will be too creamy. Uh, you need to mix it very well with the stick and it's not very good uh, because every, every time when you didn't paint during of two days, you must to repeat the process, remove the nozzle, mix it very well, then it's working well. Uh, I like Andrea, uh, but sometimes Andrea is too transparent, uh, not very opaque. Uh, uh, from the latest that I paint was uh, Reaper acrylics, uh, it's totally matte and it's very durable. Uh, also, uh, people uh, tell me that good uh, Josoni acrylics, I didn't try it, but uh, people like it. Uh, so it depends on the brands that you can find in your country because uh, Reaper it's American and it doesn't sell in Russia because just have no meaning. Uh, they have the Andre, they have the scale 75 uh, and a lot of Vallejo. I don't like Vallejo. Last time it's bad quality because uh, sometimes it's very glossy yeah. uh, and sometimes it's crackles. Uh, crackle on surface if you paint something like a thick layer uh, opaque layer you can you, you need to receive opaqueness but in result your uh, your upper layer will be just cracked and it's not good it, it's uh, not acceptable and as i say uncontrollable glossiness sometimes it's really glossy sometimes it's uh, semi glossy and it's difficult to control uh, especially this uh, glossiness when you paint the smooth gradient if you need to receive the really uh, smooth uh, uh, blending, a uh, small gradient, uh, one step of your gradient may have the different glossiness. Uh, in result, the, uh, especially the smoothness will be broken because color may be uh, totally uh, right, but especially the glossiness may be different on one stage. In result, you receive the sharp border, not because you mix the wrong color, but because you receive the uncontrollable glossiness on the one step. In result, you receive the sharp border. One uh, color looks darker, another looks brighter, but actually it's, it's very closest colors. But one just more glossy and another not, and the result, your gradient was broken. Uh, and this is why I prefer totally matte colors, because I control everything every time. Do you have some experience with AK, AK colors? Uh, some I use it for ever sometime. I just cannot make something bad or good, because I just have no experience, mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, I have a lot of colors on my uh, working table, but I use maybe 10 persons because the select very wide. I just uh, bought too much of colors, but I don't need so much of colors. And I just choose uh, something from this range, something from this, and 
just put it close to my hands, especially for uh, work with them awfully. But the rest, it's just uh, meaningless. Too much of colors, I don't need so much of colors. And I'm just afraid to buy uh, the new colors because it's too much for me. I have the Valiev, I have the Citadel, I have the Andrea Scale 75, Reaper, uh, AK, something from the artistic acrylics, but I just don't need so much of paints, uh, too much of too much of space. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I can see that um, every material you do looks very realistic, and uh, I guess do you have sometimes uh, do you must make some balance because. Uh, when you express something more, uh, I guess it depends on material, something is glossy, something is made, but mm, yes. you need to make balance, you watch all the time when you do, like, what can express more to be uh, pleasant for uh, viewers or... Uh, yes, uh, sometimes I, not sometimes, always, yeah. I need to uh, compare what I already paint and what I want to paint, because uh, sometimes maybe uh, all elements uh, looks too different on, on surface. I mean the elements of the texture. And I just need to compare it, uh, compare these elements with the reference picture. Uh, and as I say, sometimes it's, uh, not sometimes, always needs a one step backward, especially for uh, correct uh, the sense, correct the view, because uh, maybe I paint the, uh, some elements uh, too um, too accurate, too precise, and I need more um, randomness. And then I go back, uh, mix another color, uh, previous color, and uh, add some spots, especially for uh, correct this um, too well, well, too well organized spots. I need to add more spots for make this um, the big part of the fold more random, more soft. And sometimes when I see it's looking, looking too uh, too rough because contrast of the spots too uh, strong. I make the glazing and I uh, paint the shades with the dark glaze to make these uh, bright spots and the shades uh, not so bright. And sometimes these uh, gaps look uh, too dark on the place of the highlights. Then I need to make the glazing and paint the highlights uh, with the thin, transparent, uh, bright layer, especially for make the gaps brighter. So, yeah, all, always it's control about the contrasting of materials and always it's control of the previous stage too, because, for example, uh, when I paint the face, I start from the eyes. Uh, and I just know that eyes, it always doesn't look uh, like a pure white. It's something like a light gray, something like a pink, but always the uh, uh, eyeballs doesn't look like pure white. Uh, but when I paint it, with light gray and paint uh, the rest of the face, uh, I just need to check uh, my eyes really looks uh, brighter than the skin tone or not, because sometimes it looks darker. And then I must to back, uh, uh, go back and repaint the eyes totally, because it's too dark for the skin tone. Yes. And always it's control all elements, uh, because as I say, it's... Uh, I just need to think about the model, like about the wall item. Not about the separate spots, not about the separate details. I just need to control the, the wall view uh, because it's a wall image. It's an image in my head and I must con control everything and I must compare it with the reference because it may look good but it's not looks like a reference picture because something wrong. And always, yeah, it's always a, a step backward. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Some questions? I think we're already sitting longer. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh -huh.